the ant people, the legend of the Hopi natives, the Native Americans, and connections to the Anunnaki. The sky god of Babylon was called Anu by the tribes of uh, America, and the Hopi word for ant is also Anu, and the Hopi root word for Naki, which means friend, Anu Naki. So it's the same, basically the same word used by the Babylonians, the Sumerians, which means friend. Therefore, the Hopi Anu Naki, or friends of ants, may have been the same as the Sumerian Anunnaki, the beings who once came to earth from heaven. Is it a coincidence that they have the same words? Or is it evidence? Is it possible to suggest that the Anu people, or the ant people, and the Anunnaki were similar beings who visited earth? And yesterday I posted a similar type of a matter concerning the Chinese, ancient Chinese, quote unquote, gods who came from the heavens, the skies, who were also extraterrestrial about uh, 5,000 years ago. Now, the Hopi people are one of the Native American tribes descended from the ancient peoples who lived in the southwestern area of the United States, which today is called the Four Corners. One of the groups of the ancient people of the Pueblo was the mysterious Anasazi, the ancients, who mysteriously flourished and disappeared between 550 and 1300 AD. The history of the Hopi goes back thousands of years, making it one of the oldest living cultures in our world. The original name of the Hopi people is Hopi Tu Shi Nu Mu, which means peaceful people. The concepts of morality and ethics are deeply rooted in Hopi traditions and this implied a respect for all living things. Traditionally, they lived according to the laws of the creator, Masao. The Hopi believed that the gods arose from the ground, in contrast to other mythologies in which the gods came from the sky. Their mythology suggests that the ants populated the heart of the earth. An independent researcher and author of some amazing books on alien visitation, Gary David, spent 30 years of his life immersed in the culture and history of the Hopi in South Dakota, and according to him, they found philosophy in the essence that belongs to the constellations in the sky, which reflects the geography of the earth. This is something that could be a theory about the three pyramids of Giza and the relationship with the stars in the Orion belt, and there are scientific studies that support this theory. It's interesting to note that Gary David News has a similar correlation between the Hopi Mesa and the Southwest in the same constellation of Orion. The three stars that make up Orion's belt look brightest early in the year and they line up with each of the pyramids. Many other different cultures gave meanings to this particular group of stars and it's evident that the heavens have fascinated them for centuries. David thought about it too and began to study the sky and the locations of the Hopi people and their ruins. Noting that these villages were aligned with all the major stars in the constellation of Orion and the belt of Orion. He also studied the art that was on the cave walls and this led him to some interesting conclusions that the Hopi people extraterrestrial life and the importance of other planets in the solar system had, taken, uh, had been taken very seriously. In the rocks and caves of Mesa villages, he found many hieroglyphs that match modern graphics of star and constellation patterns. Throughout the southwestern United States, we find petroglyphs, which are, of course, rock carvings or pictographs, cave paintings representing entities with thin bodies, large eyes, and bulbous heads, sometimes projecting antenna, and these mysterious figures are frequently displayed in a posture of prayer, the elbows and knees placed at right angles similar to the bent legs of an ant. Many claims that the ant beings depicted resemble modern ideas of extraterrestrial life, and some believe that the Hopi tribe have seen and interacted with extraterrestrial beings. One of the most intriguing Hopi legends involves the Ant people, who were crucial to the Hopi survival 
not just once, but twice. The Hopi traditions, there, uh, in their traditions, there are time cycles similar to Aztec mythology, and like many other mythologies, and they believe that at the end of each cycle, the gods would return. We're currently going through the fourth world, as they call it, or the next cycle. However, when what is interesting in those cycles is the third, during which the Hopi talk about flying shields. This world of the fourth cycle achieved an advanced civilization that was finally destroyed by God Sotukang, nephew of the Creator, with great floods similar to how many other traditions describe the ancient floods. By describing how advanced the third world was, advanced quote-unquote flying shields were developed with the ability to attack cities that were far away and to travel rapidly between different locations in the world. Flying, of course. The similarity to what we think of today as flying disks or aircraft, advanced aircraft, is astonishing. The so-called first world was apparently destroyed by fire, possibly some kind of volcanism, asteroid attack, or coronal mass ejection from the sun. The second world was destroyed by ice, ice age glaciers, or a change of poles. And during these two global cataclysms, the virtuous members of the Hopi tribe were guided by a strangely shaped cloud during the day and a moving star at night, which led them to the god of the sky named Sotu Kang, who finally led them to the to be uh, led them to the ant in Hopi Inu Sinom. The ant people then escorted the Hopi to underground caves, where they found shelter and sustenance. So in this legend, the ant people are portrayed as generous and hardworking, giving food to the Hopi when supplies are scarce and teaching them the merits of food storage. According to the wisdom of the Native Americans, the Hopi follow the path of peace. These words were spoken by Sotunang at the beginning of the fourth world. Quote, Look, I have washed even the footprints of your apparition, the steps that I left you. At the bottom of the seas are all the proud cities, the flying shields and worldly treasures corrupted by evil, and the people who did not find time to sing the praises of the Creator from the top of their hills. But the day will come if you keep the memory and the meaning of your appearance when these steps emerge again to demonstrate the truth that you speak." End quote. In addition, according to the traditions of the Hopi, the survivors of the flood from the previous world spread to different places under the guidance of Masao, following his sign in the sky. When Masao landed, he drew a petroglyph showing a lady riding a wingless, dome-shaped shipped ship, and this petroglyph symbolizes the day of purification, when the true Hopi will fly to their planets in those wingless ships. Many have said that these flying shields or wingless ships clearly refer to what we know today as unidentified flying objects or UFOs. In other parts of the world, other drawings and engravings would give us a spark of theories about another race of extraterrestrial beings which were here interacting and possibly genetically modifying humanity in the ancient land of Sumeria, and these of course were the Anunnaki. The ancient Sumerian tablets dated back 20,000 years tell that the Anunnaki were a race of beings from the planet Nibiru who created humans by taking indigenous beings from the earth, modifying their DNA with that of uh, alien, ancient aliens, and the Anunnaki race is believed to be the superior race who from the heavens. If you thought that by originating from the heavens, it was thought that through your teachings, the Sum Sumerians learned to live in the world and take care of it until the gods created of uh, creation returned. It's just like the ant people, the Anu of the Hopi, they were there to teach humanity about their planet and how to use its resources. So it's interesting to note that there is a linguistic link. The sky god of Babylon was called Anu. The Hopi word for ant is also Anu. And the Hopi root word Ani, uh, Naki, which means friend. Therefore, the Hopi Anu Naki, or friends of ants, or that may have been the same as the Sumerian Anunnaki, the beings who once came to earth from heaven. 
There's also a similar pronunciation of the Hopi ancestors, the Anasazi. Again, we see this phrase in another belief in another part of the world. It's not to say that it proves anything. It's just an interesting note. Uh, it's a coincidence, or is it uh, evidence? Is it possible to suggest that the Ant people and the Anunnaki were similar beings who visited Earth in the remote past to give a helping hand to our ancestors? Is it possible that these stories interact in any way? Whether or not there is a real connection between the Hopi of the Southwest and the ancient Sumerians, it certainly uh, pauses in that the creation stories were very similar. He also points out the celestial communication has been a curiosity of humanity for much longer than UFO sightings of the 20th century. As we continue to search heaven for answers in our age, is it humbling? It's humbling to think that the same questions may have been asked in ancient times. This was originally published in Ancient Mysteries by N. Hale, and it's on Collective Spark. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.